eles vêm, carregam a madeira, aí vai embora. Aí a gente não pode fazer nada. É muito triste a gente ver muita a mata destruída aí. In August, the world watched in horror as images like this came out of Brazil, of flames destroying vast parts of the Amazon, the world's largest rainforest. There have been over 80,000 fires in Brazil already this year, a nearly 30% increase from the same period last year. The fires are part of a worsening trend in Brazil, the rise of deforestation, and they've come as the country's president, Jair Bolsonaro, has weakened environmental protections. We're driving through a part of the Amazon that's designated as a national park, and just out the window, there's a large fire with white smoke covering the entire area, drifting over the highway. And so this is just one of the many fires that have been set to illegally clear the rainforest. Brazil is living an environmental crisis now in the Amazon. But there is a dimension that I don't think people realized, which is the violence that comes with that destruction. There is a human rights tragedy behind the environmental tragedy. Eu só tenho isso aqui é meu meio de sobrevivência. It's not just trees that are being cut in Brazil. It's lives of people on the front line trying to stop deforestation. De uma certeza eu tenho, eu só a certeza que eu tenho que eu vou morrer. Por quê? Eu me levantei para defender um ser humano, uma vida. Fault Lines travels to Brazil to investigate what's at the heart of the Amazon burning. These are images from a day that's become notorious in Brazil, August 10th. It's now known as the Day of Fire. What did this area look like? Vou falar com minhas palavras, era como se fosse um vulcão do inferno saindo assim. It took place in the state of Pará, in northern Brazil. The signs are still here two months later, visible in the burnt earth. Maria Marcia de Mello, a small farmer here, arrived home to see the hills around her farm engulfed in flames. Daí para frente, quando eu olhei, eu falei, meu Deus, o assentamento está debaixo de fogo. Eu não sei quem foi, mas eles colocaram fogo para todo lado que você olhava. 31 fires were set just in the farmer's settlement where she lives that one day. And in the area around here, there were over a hundred fires. Eu senti um, uma tristeza muito grande. Para falar bem a verdade para vocês, eu só sentei na minha cama e chorei muito. Só assim de ver tudo se acabando, a serra queimando. What the day of fire illustrates about what's happening in Brazil is that most of these fires are not natural. They're man-made, deliberately set to clear land for cattle and often illegal logging. Do dia 10 em diante, o, as nuvens aqui, o sol não apareceu mais durante uma semana. Why did people want you to spread the word about the day of fire? Adesio Peran is a journalist in the town of Novo Progresso, where the fires were centered. Days before the fire, he wrote an article saying that local ranchers were planning a series of coordinated fires for August 10th. Se todos queimam, é, generaliza, então quer dizer, vai facilitar para os, os, os agressores, aquelas pessoas que estão trabalhando ilegalmente, querem fazer a queimada ilegal. He says that the people who set the fires also had another objective. E do outro lado, chamar a atenção do presidente, para que ele realmente dá um incentivo para eles aqui na Amazônia, né? Na, na questão do desmatamento, que eles acreditam que ainda não vai ter essas imposições né, do Ibama, multa, como sempre aconteceu. The day of fire took place as the world's eyes turned to Brazil, and international outrage reached its peak over the fires here. Leaders like French President Emmanuel Macron said President Bolsonaro needed to do more to protect the Amazon, 
considered a bulwark against rising temperatures and climate change. But Bolsonaro dismissed European leaders' concerns, saying they shouldn't interfere, and without any evidence, blamed foreign NGOs. Me entender, pode ter sido potencializada por ONGs, porque eles perderam grana, tá? com a intenção de trazer problemas para o Brasil. Eventually, the government was forced to respond, deploying the army across the Amazon to combat the fires at the end of August. In Novo Progresso, the presence of federal forces, along with an investigation into the day of fire, raised tensions. Eu sofri ameaças após a, a vinda do exército. Um grupo aí tentou jogar, me difamar, dizendo que era eu culpado aqui por estar acontecendo aquelas ações. Flyers like this were distributed on social media and around town, saying that Adesio was responsible for the attention brought to Novo Progresso. Were you afraid when you saw this? Muito medo. As pessoas são perigosas. He was forced to leave town for nearly a month, only recently returned when we spoke to him. Adesio told us he isn't confident authorities will be able to catch the main people behind the day of fire. Eles são muito bem organizados e poderosos. Eles não jamais vão um entregar o outro. Eles não entregam. Eu não acredito que eles consigam desvendar essa organização. Even if officials don't catch the organizers, the message the perpetrators wanted to send is clear. Eles acreditam que o Bolsonaro vá fazer alguma coisa para que eles possam ocupar a Amazônia de uma forma mais expansosa, né? Para que possa expandir, com certeza. Deforestation was on the rise even before Bolsonaro came to office. Especially in areas like this, a hub of cattle ranching. But also illegal logging and mining. But the fires in Brazil this year seem to have confirmed the worst fears of Bolsonaro's critics, that the new president would worsen deforestation rather than combat it. Bolsonaro was elected on a far-right platform of opening up the Amazon for development by easing environmental restrictions. Não haverá mais aquela briga do, do Ministério da Agricultura com o meio ambiente. Não vou admitir mais Ibama sair montando a torta direito por aí, bem como em Semibiu. Essa festa vai acabar. Under Bolsonaro, deforestation is at its highest point in a decade, with an area 10 times the size of New York City destroyed through October this year. And in August, there was an average of a thousand fires every day. The message that arrives on the ground is that now everything is possible. Now we can keep on invading public land, we can keep on deforesting because it will be forgiven. Criminal networks are at the heart of deforestation in the Amazon, where valuable trees are cut illegally for timber. Later, Fires are set to clear the land so it can be sold, often with fake land titles, and used for cattle or soy, two key exports, as well as mining. So it is a profitable business, and that's why we see the continuation of this model in the Amazon. They extract the high valuable timber, they sell it, they get some cash out of it, and then they can invest in the continuation of the illegal activity, the foresting, put some grass, raising cattle, selling the, the land. Or so it's a self-reinforcing cycle. Exactly. We saw a decrease in deforestation. From 2004 to 2012, Brazil prioritized reducing deforestation and was successful. But as international demand grew for soy and beef and the agriculture lobby rose in power in Congress, deforestation began to increase. So this is Novo Progresso. The black part is previous, yeah, previous deforestation. And the pink part is the new deforestation that they are detecting for this month. So it's really difficult to see that Brazil already knows how to do it, right? Because we did it. We were getting closer to zero deforestation. And then the things that were working started to be dismantled. And now it's even accelerated. It's even accelerated. Even with deforestation rising, Bolsonaro has weakened the Obama, the main federal environmental agency. 
slashing its budget, and not even a year into his presidency, fines for environmental crimes have gone down by nearly 30% from last year. We wanted to understand how Bolsonaro's policies and budget cuts have impacted Obama, so we accompanied a team of agents on a field operation in the state of Pará, in Brazil's north. Using satellite data, they're hoping to confirm locations of illegal logging and try to find out who's behind it. At one point, we came across a house that looked like it was recently occupied, where logs were still burning. Just a bit further down the road, there were more signs loggers had been here. The Obama agent told us that this took place maybe today or yesterday, and that this tree, Castanero tree, is probably over 70 years old, and this is a protected tree uh, that's not supposed to be deforested. As we drove along, it felt like we were always one step behind the illegal loggers, coming across one patch after another of scorched land. We couldn't interview any of the agents we accompanied because the environmental ministry wouldn't allow them to speak. But we did find one agent who was not a part of this operation who was willing to speak with us about what's happening at Obama under Bolsonaro. We're concealing his identity because he's not authorized to speak. He told us that operations like the one we went on have become increasingly rare under Bolsonaro. He also told us that their job has become harder due to restrictions on destroying equipment used by illegal loggers and miners. E a destruição do equipamento desse, às vezes a gente destrói é, a carregadeira em área de garimpo, que custa mais de um milhão de reais. Isso daí de capitalismo, o cara pensa muito antes de colocar um equipamento desse em campo, sabendo que a equipe está lá. Agora, se não houver destruição, se isso vai continuar lá na mão dele, ele não vai temer. O simples fato do fiscal chegar e autuar, colocar uma multa ali, não impede o avanço desse dano. Toward the end of our time accompanying Obama agents, the team came across a massive field of burnt earth. Agents told us off camera that they would investigate to find out who's responsible and issue a fine. No de outubro do ano passado, mais ou menos para cá, esses infatores estão sendo empoderados pelo discurso do presidente da República. Então, o trabalho tem ficado muito mais difícil, muito mais perigoso para o servidor. He isn't the only one that feels like this. Over 600 federal environmental workers signed a letter in August saying budget cuts and the new president's policies were hampering their ability to do their jobs and were leading to a rise in fires. Do you feel like you and your colleagues have enough resources, have enough support to do your job properly? Nosso problema hoje é essa pressão interna, esse assédio que o servidor passa quando ele exerce a função dele de maneira correta. A perspectiva de se continuar desse jeito, o desmatamento vai aumentar. A área da Amazônia desmatada ultrapassar 20%, o resto perde a capacidade de se recompor. One effect of the weakening of Brazil's environmental agency has been that communities in the Amazon are increasingly on their own to protect their land. For indigenous communities, this has been coupled with moves by President Bolsonaro to try and open up their territories for agriculture and mining. We met two leaders from the Arara indigenous community, Turu and Mojibi. 
They're taking us to see where illegal loggers have entered their territory recently. Logo quando Bolsonaro assumiu como presidente, passou uma semana e começou. Mas esses madeireiros, esses... Aí que começou mesmo, aí que avançou mesmo, a madeira começou a endoidar e entrar para todo lado aí, para todo canto aí, ó, tem ramal aí de madeireiro. Desse, logo quando ele entrou aí, aí que começou né, o fofo de margem, drobou, né, do retirado de madeira. The path we walked along in the dense forest was one cut and plowed through by loggers. Que eu me sente assim, a dor quando a, a pessoa bate no coração da gente. Então, quando eu vi nesses instrumentos de mata, assim, a gente sente muita tristeza. Onde a gente vai andar no mato hoje, a gente encontra muito ramal desses madeireiros. A gente já acionou Ibama, Polícia Federal, nada resolvido. A gente mandou documento, a gente tirou foto, a gente fez o que podia fazer, né? Até agora não tomaram providência, né? E dizer, não, nós não temos funcionário. Aí não tem como fazer a operação. Before Bolsonaro was elected, the Arara set up a village on the border of their territory to try and stop criminals from coming in. But in the past year, it's become harder, and illegal loggers have managed to cut and burn deeper and deeper into their lands, encroaching on the community. Later, another Arara leader, Tachi, joined us. In the areas we went to with him, not only did we see where the trees had been cut and taken, but that loggers were already taking the trees apart right in the forest. Aí ficou só esse restante aqui, ó. Tinha muito mesmo. Tem um arrumo assim grande. Isso aí, esse material aí mais caro que existe no Brasil. Esse aí IP. Isso aí que mais que sendo tirado mais. Officials refer to illegal groups that harvest this tree as Ipe mafias. Deeper into their territory, it's one patch after another of wood cut and torn away by loggers to be sold as part of the timber trade. With a lack of response from the government, they've started confronting the loggers to try and stop them. When we go there to confront them, they come with another reaction. No, the government doesn't watch the news, the news, and the Bolsonaro didn't say it when he won, and he threw it in the land of the terra indígena. It's the way they say it. But confronting illegal loggers comes with risks. They're threatening the indígenas. Mesmo assim, riscando a vida, a gente o protege, né? É dali que a gente se alimenta de, de caça, né? De tudo, tem remédio medicinal, a gente faz. É por isso que a gente protege, né? Terra, porque tem muito... Que nós sobrevivemos daquilo, da mata, né? Enquanto nós, nós existimos, luta aí até... Até uma hora vem providência aí para a gente proteger essa terra. We made repeated requests to the Ministry of Environment for an interview, but received no response. Local people have stepped up their defense of the forest because of the lack of state. Their work is extremely valuable especially in a situation where you have weakening of agencies and they don't have enough people. But that work by local residents, indigenous peoples and others, and farmers, uh, has put them at risk, at risk of threats, intimidation, violence, and even killings by criminal networks that are intent 
on destroying the forest for profit. Brazil is one of the most dangerous countries in the world to be a land defender because of the power of criminal networks deforesting the land. As illegal logging and mining have gotten worse here in Terra Nossa, Maria Marcia has tried to stop it by reporting it to officials, but that comes with risks. Three farmers who tried to report illegal logging here were killed last year. Quando eu dormo, meu marido olha. Quando eu tô acordada, eu fico aqui. Aí eu fico prestando atenção, né? Aí ele fica ali. E quando tava muito, muito mesmo, nem eu dormia, nem ele dormia. Que aí eu não deixava ele dormir, eu braço muito acelerado e eu e eu com medo de morrer, aí eu The threats were made particularly clear last year when she tried to report the burning of 2000 of her banana trees to Ibama. Pois na hora que eu saí, eu fui surpreendida por uma, pelo um madeireiro e pelo um fazendeiro que estava sabendo que eu estava no Ibama denunciando eles. Lá eu peguei um arrocho tão grande, tão grande. Eu fui tão humilhada que você nem imagina. The threats haven't stopped since then. Mais recente assim que foi muito foi no extremo assim, foi o grileiro, o madeireiro, ele chegou em mim e disse para mim que eu era uma onça, eu não era um ser humano, porque eu tava marcando território. Que onça se merecia, assim, matava a onça era com um tiro na cara, bala de 38 na cara. E ele chegou a agarrar no meu braço e disse para mim que era para pensar nos meus filhos, na minha família. With the killings last year, she knows these aren't idle threats. Eu tô falando, eu tenho medo, tremo pela minha vida, é pela vida dos meus amigos, mas chega de covardia, alguém tem uma hora tem, como é que você vai passar, você vai ver matar seu amigo e fechar os olhos. It's not just Maria's settlement. In the past decade, over 300 people have been killed across the Brazilian Amazon over land conflicts, standing up to powerful interests. These are very specific killings. It's the killing to the person who is standing up and defending the forest. That killing sends a message to everybody in the community that if you do anything, that's going to happen to you. So the impact of the killings is, is you know, enormous. Hoje em dia, estou matando um ser humano como que mata um bicho. This woman knows the costs of trying to fight against deforestation too well. Her husband, a small farmer, disappeared last year after he confronted a local rancher who was taking trees from his land. We're concealing her identity at her request because of her fear of being targeted by the people who went after her husband. What happened with your husband? How did this all begin? Olha, ele saiu de casa, aí foi pro sítio. E aí, desse dia, não apareceu mais. Was your husband intending to report illegal logging to the authorities before he disappeared? Tava. Doutor Zorro. E ele, ele dizia que ele ia acabar com aquele negócio de, de madeireiro, a, invadindo. She told us that no one's been held accountable for her husband's disappearance. Do you know if your husband is dead or alive? Vivo ele não tá. Eu tenho certeza. Ficamos sabendo que pegaram o corpo. A gente já falou, mas não, não, não pede, pelo amor de Deus, para não ser identificado, porque ele tem medo. Que levaram o corpo lá para um rumo que eles tiravam madeira lá para a terra dele. Despite the risks, why was it important for your husband to report what was happening? Porque ele disse que ia tirar aquele magote de, de bandido. Sempre eu dizia para ele, rapaz, aqui você sabe que quem manda aqui é quem tem dinheiro. Foi por isso que, que fizeram isso com ele, porque ele tinha coragem. With no body to bury, all she and her family can do is hope and wait for justice. But there's a high rate of impunity here, and murders are rarely solved. And federal prosecutors say part of the problem is the power criminal networks have economically and over local officials. Em vários casos, nós temos aquela informação esta oficial ou todas as informações levam a uma pessoa, a um grupo de pessoas, mas a comprovação disso é muito difícil. 
em muitos locais não são investigados porque aquelas vítimas elas atrapalhavam os poderosos locais. Então você tem uma conjunção, de um lado, uma estrutura de poder, de Estado realmente que é frágil e que vê essas atividades como sendo as únicas atividades lucrativas daquele local e você tem é, um grupo de pessoas apta a praticar o crime, é, não preocupadas com as questões de sustentabilidade ou qualquer outras questões assim. What did the land mean to your husband? Muito importante. Ele sonhava demais ter essa terra. Trabalhar, que ele trabalhava, era um homem muito trabalhador ele. E quando ele sumiu, né? Ficou, tava bonito lá. Have you gone back to the land since your husband disappeared? Não. Abandonado. Foi uma coisa que fizeram, pegar o sonho da gente e enterraram. If the situation continues along this path, do you think the rate of violence could get worse? Infelizmente, sim. Já há um processo de aumento dessa violência estrutural. Sem a fiscalização e com o discurso governamental que coloca em dúvida a própria existência da política, a tendência é que essa violência estrutural ela se transforme em resultados mais concretos, com mortes, com, com ameaças, com expulsões de pessoas. As the fires continued in Brazil, Bolsonaro took the stage at the UN General Assembly in September, defending his response to the crisis. Ela não está sendo devastada e nem consumida pelo fogo, como diz mentirosamente a mídia. And took aim at other countries, saying the Amazon was Brazil's to use. Valendo-se dessas falácias, um ou outro país, em vez de ajudar, embarcou nas mentiras da mídia e se portou de forma desrespeitosa e com espírito colonialista. Questionaram aquilo que nos é mais sagrado, a nossa soberania. Mr. President, why have you weakened oversight and protection in the Amazon? We made repeated requests to President Bolsonaro's office for an interview, but were told he was unavailable. There is no doubt that Brazil's Amazon belongs to Brazil and to Brazilians. You know, I don't think anybody is putting that into question. But at the end of the day, the people who are suffering most with the destruction of the Amazon are Brazilians. A gente está ameaçado é porque a gente vai proteger a floresta. Não é só as árvores que estão se acabando, mas sim as pessoas morrendo, se entregando a vida por causa das próprias árvores. Umas já foram e outras ainda estão aqui lutando para sobreviver.